Hello again, uh, welcome back for another video. Uh, today is a continuation on my series of videos on the Kickstarter print-on-demand game uh, Broadside Empires of Steel. And I thought, um, because the last time I showed you some of my homemade, or I didn't really make the STL files, but I printed off the ships, my resin 3D uh, ships that I printed off all last week. I thought this week I would show you the results of that. And I thought I would do one, one more video like this one uh, before we get into the actual game because I do believe this is a kind of like a two-part kind of product that you're that you're getting here. A, you're getting the ships, and then you're getting the game. Now, the ships you can use in all kinds of games, and the games you can use for all kinds of ships. So, which you know, it's kind of like double your value. Um, the models stand up, I think. Uh, on their own uh, and I hope to show you that in this video and then in the other videos the next videos I hope to show you that the game will stand up on its own and it's worth you checking out um, I'm in love with this game I played this I played this game now three times this weekend with my wife uh, she liked it it's a simple game um, but let's focus on the ships so here we go here we go this is the uh, we've already seen this ship here but you can see the the excellent job on this ship um, this is the Lord Nelson now, I put the turrets in this weird configuration here. You can put the turrets wherever you want. There's a cat here. Sorry about that. You can put the configuration wherever you want. Um, now, because I glued down these resin these resin turrets, I'm kind of stuck with what I've chosen. And I I kind of hate the layout, to be honest. But it, it is what it is. There's the Lord Nelson. This is a Deutschland class. The German equivalent to that. And we've seen these in the last video, so I'm just bruising through these. Uh, this is a armored cruiser. I think this is what a... A warrior? Oh, what came off there? Oh, a turret came off. Hooray! A turret came off. There's the warrior. Put his turret right there. This is the HMS Aaron, a, an actual dreadnought. Just showing you the details one more time. Or us, the Canada, sorry, Canada. And then we have a torpedo boat and a British destroyer. Now, I'm just going to move these out of the way for a second, carefully, without breaking them. And I'm going to bring in. Let me bring in actually a torpedo boat, a German torpedo boat. Here we go. Here's the German torpedo boat. You print these off just like this. If you have a build plate about that big, you can probably get 15 of these things in, in weird angles, you know, in, in angles kind of like this. You can print them as close as you want without touching, kind of like that, and you can just fill them out. So you can get a lot of these things. But if we just focus on this one here, it then you kind of print off these. Um, now these come in paper, and I've laminated them and cut them out. They're like a little identifi identifiers, and um, it's kind of like the board that the ships sit on. So there's the outline for the Aaron. So if I bring the Aaron back in here, the, or as the Canada, but anyway, it would you would kind of glue it down or, or blue tack it down there, and it's going to give you all your fire arcs So and your turning arcs. So your turning arcs are on here, and the red arc is 45 degrees, and the blue arcs are 15 degrees, I believe. And then the green is 90 degrees, so destroyers can turn and turn right on their center. But you put these things down, or the ships down on these things, and once you've painted them, now I painted them off of those things, but once you've painted them, you're kind of left with something like this. And this is the V, this is the V25. Now I'll just take a look, closer look at him, painted, hopefully he comes through there. Now he's just blue tacked on there. You know, I can I can take him off anytime I want, and these are very rudimentary paint jobs. I went for a a a very coal and brown look for the Germans. You'll see that on the other pictures on the dreadnoughts, it's more pronounced. But there you'll see what he looks like. So that is a German torpedo boat. Just move him off to the side there. Uh, you can also get a V-138, which is, uh, I guess, similar in size, but it's a little smaller. You can see the size difference there. It's a little less chunky, and this one's V-25 is a little wider. But you get a second type of torpedo boat. We'll put them up there. Then we'll move on to German light cruisers. Here is the Gazelle. Now, you can print these off as many times as you want. You can print off the Gazelle, and they provide you with the with the bases for all of the ships that are that are named so you have the nymph um the, there's a whole bunch of other ones but there's like, I think there's four of these gazelle class but 
you know it was a it was German gray down as a base then dry brushed with a light gray then inked down with a or washed down with a non oil a six to one non oil lamine medium wash then dry brushed one more time then the decking was done and the lifeboats and I painted the ship in probably about nine or ten minutes so there's the the gazelle we're going to get these things in a little bit of an order here next we will have the the dresden so here's the dresden i should bring all the cruisers on so it's not so here's the konigsberg the magerberg and the pillau which i've painted so far now there is lots more cruisers but this is just what i've gotten painted so if we just look at the dresden I mean, once you paint them, there's there's enough detail there. That's Dresden. Here is uh, Konigsberg, I believe. Yeah. We have uh, what Magdeburg, I think, are next. Getting into the more modern cruisers. And Pillau, which has that unique back deck there for its plane. I, I believe. I'm not sure if it's a plane. It, it might be depth charges for all I know. There's Pillau. And then um, <clears throat> we'll move on to the pre-dreadnought. And here is the Deutschland. Now, if I can bring the Deutschland back that's um, not painted, you can see how a little bit of paint really brings these things to life. And that's why I chose this color scheme, the kind of like the dark, dark gray and uh light brown or light tan or um just to bring out all of the ships now i'm not 100 percent happy with the color scheme but uh, it works for the game I, these are after all gaming pieces here's a closer look at the uh get that cat hair out of there at my rudimentary paint job on uh it's pre-dreadnought i really like the pre-dreadnoughts they, they look they came out amazing uh next we'll go on to the next up uh after the deutschland we'll move on to the what is this, this is the nassau so you're getting into the first german dreadnoughts had a checkered history the, these ships they weren't very valuable weren't very useful in the battle of uh of jutland had a lot of problems with them <clears throat> but they still have a lot of guns so they're still capable of doing a lot of damage Here's the Heligoland. I'll just take a close look at him. Now this is where the dreadnoughts on the German side start getting serious. Still have that unique um, turret layout. I mean, when you're looking at forward, that's six guns firing forward, six firing back, and eight to the sides. It's neat. It's I can understand the design. Um, I mean, if you're chasing the ship down, if you're chasing a fleet down, you got the ship's gun, the six guns. If you're if if you're retreating you got six guns so it's a unique ship and i actually like the look of it uh next we have we're starting to get on to the super dreadnoughts we have the uh the kaiser class and here i have the frederick der grosse i am um, i on purpose didn't paint the middle part in the normal deck colors just to show at, on the tabletop level so my wife could see that these were her more important ships, her more um, heavily armored ships. And I think it looks it looks pretty good. It turned out pretty well. Now, next thing is to get some steel wool and stick some smoke coming out of the top funnels there. And I think it will be right as rain. Uh, then we have the Koenig, which is, I guess, kind of like the Iron Duke equivalent. You've got the centerline turrets. It's a distinctive looking battleship now that the uh, and now we have the the war spite or the Queen Elizabeth um, contender the Bayern now they only built two of these and they were built late in the war so they I don't think they've seen any actual combat but it's a unique ship to have in the game and it's really the only serious threat in game terms you have of countering the Queen Elizabeth and the Revenge class. Here's the Bayern. And now we get to the old um, <clears throat> the old armored cruisers. 
We have three armored cruisers. Um, get that cat hair out of there. Uh, three armored cruisers in this game. We have... Uh, let's put them in order here. We have the Rune, the Sharn Horse, and the Blucher. Now, the Blucher is huge, but let's start off with the Rune anyway first. And you can agree, like, when they're all laid out there, it looks pretty nice. Here's the Rune. This is a... a Light cruiser eater. It just eats light cruisers and destroyers for breakfast. Put all those primary, secondary, and tertiary guns on it. <clears throat> Same with the Scharnhorst. More than a match for any cruiser it'll meet on the sea. After that, probably not so much. An iconic ship. Not used, obviously it's, it was defeated at the Falklands early in the war, so not used in Jutland, but it's cool in game terms to have it you know, to have fictional battles with it. And then we have the Blucher, who was used in the North Sea and was promptly sunk. Wasn't fast enough to keep up with the escaping battle cruisers. Plus, the British kind of had blood in their eyes and kept shooting at it, even though it was basically dead in the water and let the rest of the German fleet escape. But here's the Blucher, and this is a... Um, this is a unique ship in the game, and we get into the stat cards on the game and what these ships can each do, but this ship is capable of some wonderful stuff, um, but it can also be victimized pretty pretty terribly. So let's just take a look at the German fleet, if I can lift my camera up here. There's the German ship so far. We have a couple more left. I have three more, four more destroyers, two more of each type, so I'll just bring them over here to get them out of the way. And then we have uh, the start of my battle cruisers. So this is the, the sidelets. And you can see the sidelets is a the German battle cruisers along with the British battle cruisers. They're pretty big. They're huge ships. Let's just again take a look at a resin ship, unpainted, next to it. I mean, it's quite the transformation, I think, uh, and I'm I'm mightily impressed with the design of these ships and how easy they were to print and easy they were to paint. There's the sidelets. Suffered some severe damage. In the Battle of Jutland, so much so that when she, it was a miracle that she got back to port. But when she did get back to port, she promptly she promptly sank <laughs> in the dock. So, I mean, did she really sink or did she just get uh, beached? But essentially, if she if she had been out for much longer on the high seas, she would have been at the bottom, like Lutzow. Uh, so there's sidelets. Now we move on to I'm just gonna push these out of the way so they don't interfere with my magnification. Now we get on to the British. Here's a, a, a destroyer. Take out the the old destroyer and put them next to it so you can see how they kind of transform. There's the HMS Contest. Again, they're just blue tacked down. That's the Contest. We'll do HMS Spitfire, very famous destroyer. I might be wrong, but I think the Spitfire was the destroyer that was in the collision in the nighttime with the German dreadnought. It took out a whole chunk of it, sailed home with it, <laughs> attached to its bow. And there's the Acasta, the lead in the class. Again, like they're just, you know, and you'd think, you know, you can move them around with your finger. Some people complain about the cookie bases on the Victory at Sea stuff. Uh, this is kind of like the opposite. They've gone for the completely opposite thing. Uh, let's go to cruisers next. I only have three cruisers printed off for the British so far. So I have the Galatea, the Caledon, and the Glasgow. Glasgow. There's the Glasgow. I went for a very light deck color and a light gray hull. But you can see there's lots of little guns. This is a destroyer eater. It just eats destroyers for breakfast. This is the Galatea, the next up in the... You can see the... I quite like these things. The little cards they sit on. They do the job. Now, come on, focus in here. The British cruisers are... Well, we'll get into the stat cards later on, but the British cruisers are pretty expensive. Because they're pretty good. There's the Caledon. A few of these cruisers would go on to serve in the early World War II, I believe. Uh, now we're going to go on to the pre-dreadnought. Now this is the Agamemnon. This is the one that I chose. I didn't choose a Lord Nelson. 
I just love the name Agamemnon, mainly because of Bag uh, Bab Babylon. Babylon 5. Uh, so here's the pre-dreadnought on the British side. Oh, focus in, please. Mainly used for the Mediterranean, Mediterranean theater, but I just thought I'd have one just because it is a game. And you can always have a Deutschland. Where's Deutschland? You're up here somewhere. Are we going to get a size comparison of the two of them together? Very similar designs, quite honestly. There's the uh, Lord Nelson, or sorry, the Agamemnon. Now we have the ill-fated armored cruiser Monmouth. Really not much use for anything, but it, it does have a lot of light guns on it, and it is capable of tackling German light cruisers. Plus it's fairly cheap, points worth. So you'll probably see it in a game several times, because uh, out of all the heavily armored ships that you'll see, it's probably the cheapest one, although it's not very... Uh, good at doing a whole lot. Here's the Black Prince. Just love the name. That's why I made it. Far more capable of dealing with German cruisers than the Monmouth is. And you can see the size difference and how they've learned from their mistakes on the Monmouth and actually arming their armored cruisers to come up against other armored cruisers. Just as a just as an aside here, we'll just get the Scharnhorst out. And where are you, Scharnhorst? You are here. Here's the Scharnhorst next to the Monmouth. Um, the two ship, main ships. Well, Monmouth, the Good Hope was the main ship for the British, but two of the ships of the Battle of the Cornell. And you can see the, the main battery difference between the two ships. So no wonder the Monmouth had such a hard time. Okay, let's move on. We've seen the Agamemnon. We'll go to the next one. We'll go to the Colossus. Now we're getting to proper dreadnoughts for the British side. This is the last of the original set of dreadnoughts with their wing turrets. There's Colossus. I have Hercules as well, but I haven't printed. I haven't painted him yet. Uh, we'll go with uh, Orion. Is the first of the super dreadnoughts. Now, do I have an Orion unpainted? I think I do here. Just bear with me for one sec. Here's the Orion unpainted. I mean, to me, it's a pretty nice transformation. In case you're interested in what they look like. So here's the Orion. Let's get a closer look. Center line turrets. British never look back from these. Another, my cat strikes again there. He's upstairs with his mother, so he's really upset. There's HMS Orion. Uh, we'll go with the... What would be next? The King George would be next, but I don't have him. We'll go with the Iron Duke. Here's the Iron Duke. A very famous ship, flagship of Admiral John Jellico. I admire that... Um, the Admiral, a great deal, so I couldn't wait to paint this ship up and have it in the fleet. He was a man that had a tremendous amount of pressure on his shoulders for all the criticisms that he, he came under for not destroying the high seas fleet entirely. It was actually his plan at the very beginning, two years before, not to destroy them. He didn't need to destroy them and risk the fleet. I mean, you can say, hey, he could have lost a couple of extra ships, but destroyed the high seas fleet entirely if he hadn't turned away from the oh my goodness sorry if he hadn't turned away from the torpedoes he may have lost a couple of ships but he would have probably destroyed the high seas fleet but i say there's thousands of people on those ships there's no need you don't need to destroy the high seas fleet to win the war and why lose why lose the men if you don't need to so i have a lot of admiration for him but anyway, that's his flagship there. I'm very sorry about kicking the camera there. Uh, here is the um, one of my favorite ships, the Jin Palace, the Agincourt. We've seen it in the last video with all its turrets. I think it came out really nice. That's the Agincourt. Uh, next, we will move on to the Revenge. Here is the big... The big ships now, the big guns, HMS Revenge. 
solidly built, not the fastest, but also not the slowest. Huge guns, ready to, ready to do the work. And then everyone's favorite poster boy of both World Wars, the War Spite. <clears throat> well, like I say both World Wars, probably just World War II, but pretty famous in World War I as well. Loved by the, sh uh, by the crews. Took a battering at Jutland. So here's the Queen Elizabeth class. Lots of great detail on there. They went to a, a lot of work to make sure this thing stuck out. You know, when you look at the Monmouth, how bare it, the deck seems on the Monmouth to compare to that. <clears throat> so there's Queen Elizabeth. And then we are on to the two battle cruisers that I have. I have one battle cruiser for the Germans, and I have two for the British. And those would be there's a there's a trend here. Invincible and indefatigable. <laughs> so when you put it Invincible, Indefatigable, and the Black Prince together, um, wherever he went, here he is. I have a, an affinity for the, the ships that sunk in the Battle of Jutland catastrophic, catastrophically. So anyway, here's the first battle cruiser. A nice ship. I think I have the turrets on. I think these ones here go on the front. So I think I have these two turrets mixed up, but oh well, the tabletop, you'll never know. There's Invincible and here's Indefatigable. Just so you can see the size difference between the two ships, there is a fair size difference. Hopefully that comes through. Indefatigable is a little bit longer and it's a little chunkier too, I believe, maybe. So here's Indefatigable. Um, in the Battle of Jutland, when they when the when the Grand Fleet got back, when the officers were taking stock of what they had lost, uh, neither the Invincible or the Indefatigable or the Black Prince, um, or any of the ships that were lost really were mourned. They didn't really have a high opinion of these ships, so they weren't a great loss. The only ship they really cared about was the Queen Mary, which was essentially the pride of the the, the British fleet. But I don't have her painted yet because she's a really big ship, and I don't have the the filler putty yet to fill in the gaps but anyway that is the if i can just knock you around a bit more here that is the ships that i painted just in the last 48 hours so it's no problem for me to get 20 ships done a day uh, i'll do 10 at a time and it's really simple i mean i mean think about it it's one base color like the gray black it's dry brushed it's washed it's dry brushed again the deck and the detail you can do that, no problem. And it's the same for this. This is just but some medium gray, uh, dry brushed, washed, dry brushed again, and then the decking. And that's that's all it takes. Um, and the lifeboats. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. I'm, I just passed 23 minutes. I'll be back again with another one. And we're going to be looking at the rules themselves. If I can just zoom out here a bit. We're going to be looking at the rules themselves. Uh, along with the various accoutrements so the we get the damage cards here you get a whole bunch of these damage cards you get a whole bunch of these order cards they have different things on them and then we'll get into the meat and the the dirty of it here we'll get into the the stats of the ships i mean thanks for watching uh thanks for tuning in thanks for subscribing it's very appreciated and have a good day bye